Well, tomorrow is uh, another Fed press conference. Uh, it's going to be one to watch. I will be paying close attention. Um, but I, I, I could wait till tomorrow and just talk about whatever news comes up there. But, you know, there's enough going on financially um, and with the economy that I want to do sort of a pregame show um, and get my current thoughts out there before I hear what Powell has to say. And then I'll comment on uh, on what he said and what, and it, what if anything, um, uh, tomorrow's press conference changes my outlook. Now, to me, the big story uh, is that Wall Street is moving towards uh, you know, the Wall Street consensus is moving towards the idea that we're going to see higher inflation in the future. Um, that is uh, something that I would expect based on everything that's happened. Um, I think that maybe my justification, my analysis would be different than the average Wall Street folks uh, because, you, well, really the, the mainstream of economics more broadly um, even beyond Wall Street, kind of conflates inflation with economic growth. And uh, a lot of Wall Street sees that we're going that uh, the U.S. economy is going, you know, is going to reopen and we're going to have recovery summer here in 2021, and that there's going to be this big boom in the American economy, and that this is going to create a lot of inflation. And you know that's where I disagree. I tend to think that um, the U.S. economy is in terrible shape. It's only going to get in worse shape. And inflation is not a sign of a healthy, growing economy. It's a sign of a very unhealthy economy where you have an imbalance between production and consumption. Uh, that ultimately is what leads to a currency uh, inflating. It's when uh, you know people consume more goods uh, relative to how much they're producing. This is the problem with being a consumer and not a producer. Um, if you consume more than you produce, uh, you are quite literally a leech uh, because somebody has to produce all those goods that you consume. And America on net has been leeching off of the rest of the world uh, for about 40 years now. Uh, the U.S. has run perpetual trade deficits every year um, for the last four decades. And those trade deficits have been getting bigger and bigger, and as of right now, they're at cartoonishly high levels. Um, in fact, uh, people uh, you know that I've been talking to, and I've, I've mentioned this you know before, because um, I've you know, I've run into this in, in in my line of work, and other people I know are experiencing the same thing. And uh, Peter Schiff has been talking about this, so I know I'm not I'm not crazy. There are other people who are noticing this. I mean, I, I mean, you can look it up. The statistics exist. And what I'm referring to is uh, uh, all of these empty shipping containers that are building up in the United States. And you know, your first reaction might be, "What the hell? Why do I care about shipping containers? You mean those things that people uh, turn into uh, tiny houses on on HGTV or YouTube?" And yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about, those big steel containers. Sometimes if you live near a port city, you'll see them on the back of a, of a truck being shipped somewhere. Uh, those containers get packed in, in places like China and India, and they get shipped over here full of stuff that Americans want to consume. Because we Americans, we love to consume things, uh, but we don't love to produce them so much. So we have to import more than we export every year. Um, and so those containers get packed full of goods over in Asia, and they get shipped over to North America. Well, those containers sit here um, because you know it, it costs too much money for these shippers, for these people who own these big you know cargo ships, to just carry back an empty ship full of all these empty containers. So they want to sit there and uh, wait for these containers to fill up uh, of goods, you know, with goods uh, made in America that are being exported to the rest of the world. Um, but over the past year, uh, the uh, ratio between how much America is exporting versus how much it's importing has become so cartoonish that these sh that so that these ships just keep building up and building up off the coasts of North America, um, and you know our our uh, ports are filled to the brim with empty shipping containers. Um, and now we're running into a bottleneck where over in Asia, they don't have enough shipping containers. All the shipping containers, <laughs> which tend to flow back and forth all over the world, are just piling up in North America. And so people who are trying to uh, export products from uh, these other countries and ship them to the U.S., uh, they're having trouble finding spot in a, spots in, you know, in containers. 
And so what this is all evidence of is it's a, it's a very real world, world example of how America on the whole uh, is consuming without producing anything. This is the result of the lockdowns and of the government stimulus, um, you know, over the past year. Uh, you, GDP in the U.S. hasn't fallen that much. We're not in that deep of a depression. You know, we're not in the Great Depression in terms of the loss of GDP and, and all that. Um, because people are still consuming, and GDP is a measure of how much people could, you know, spend. Uh, that is... Uh, that's, you know, that's how the math is done. So because people are consuming, GDP is high, um, but there's not really a whole lot of economic activity going on here. Uh, what's been happening is uh, all of that loss of production as represented in part, although not in whole, by these shipping containers piling up in America, by the lack of exports, um, all of that is being replaced just by government spending. Uh, and the government, you know, giving people money um, through, you know, not just the STEMI checks, of course, that's, you know, that's a small part of it, but the enhanced unemployment benefits, and I think uh, most importantly, uh, forbearance uh, for mortgages and rent, uh, allowing people to get out of making payments um, on their homes, uh, which is uh, essentially transferring everything that they would have spent, that they would have had to spend on their home and just allowing them to spend it on consumption. This has allowed um, uh, the United States uh, economy to completely collapse on the production side, uh, but somehow levitate on the consumption side. You know, in a normal healthy economy, in, in you know, in real, in the real world, um, you can only consume as much as you produce. Consumption is always uh, going to, you know, e equal production in the aggregate. You know, of course, minus savings, um, but nobody saves anything. So who are we kidding? Uh, there is no savings uh, in, in, in America. There's only debt. And of course, once upon a time, uh, even debt had to be financed uh, by, you know, one man's debt uh, was another man's savings. Uh, that's the way things used to be. Uh, but, uh, you know, our economy has been out of whack and out of balance for a very, very long time. But as of right now, America's economy has never been more distorted. Um, uh, it's, it, it really is a thing to behold once you recognize um, how uh, ridiculous the whole situation is. I mean, I think about where I live, which... Um, just to me is, is sort of a um, an avatar of the phony prosperity that we enjoy broadly throughout the United States, um, where you know the railroad tracks in my town, uh, where they used to carry um, goods that you know would be produced in our town and be shipped out you know to the rest of the country, the rest of the state, the rest of the world, whatever. Whether those be um, uh, manufactured goods in the industrial part part of town or um, agricultural goods out in the country. Uh, you know, I'm in Florida, we produced a lot of oranges here. I even remember when I was young, there were still some orange groves. I also remember there being cows, um, you know, again, uh, and I'm a pretty young man, but um, all of that is gone now. The railroad tracks are being ripped up and replaced with a biking path uh, for, uh, you know, I guess retirees or the professional class of people, money managers. I mean, because we don't produce anything. There's nothing being done, and, and you know our local economy is all services. We're a community of consumers, and we don't really produce anything. Uh, you know our trade deficit uh, with the you know with the rest of the world, with the rest of the United States, with the rest of the state of Florida, has got to be massive. There's only really any prosperity or population left in this town because uh, the Fed inflates people's asset prices. Uh, those people uh, then. Um, can afford to uh, retire down in Florida um, and then, you know, spend their retirement money on leisure activities, uh, you know, which employ people around here. And I won't get too in-depth on, you know, on how, you know, our local economy works, but that, I mean, that's the basic idea. Um, it's all paid for by, you know, by uh, uh, Fed inflation. And so that gives you sort of both a, a macro and a micro view of uh, how the U.S. economy, um, you know, is operating right now. This is something, a problem that the Fed has caused. 
of the because the Fed has empowered people to consume without producing. That is what the the effect of uh, the effect of inflation has been in the United States, as Peter Schiff puts it. Um, the U.S. has been exporting its inflation, uh, you know, since the 1980s. Uh, instead of uh, you know the Fed printing money and then it all getting trapped in the United States like it does in a place like Zimbabwe or Argentina or whatever, uh, our dollars that we've been printing have been spent on imports and those dollars flow out of the United States and then foreigners hold on to them because the dollar is the world reserve currency and people go oh well this is a good store of value I'm gonna hang on to it so the U.S. has a lot of flexibility. Uh, when it comes to inflating away its money uh, without uh, eroding its purchasing power. Yes, we do have inflation in the United States, and it, is a, it has been a problem for a long time. Things of, uh, you know, consumer goods uh, have been rising in price steadily. Uh, however, uh, it has been uh, slow enough. Uh, it has been slower than the rate of growth in the supply of money, which is why we've been able to uh, continue uh, this, these trade deficits and grow them more and more over uh, the past 40 years. For a normal country that runs massive trade deficits, um, it would have eroded by now uh, the value of their currency in the foreign exchange markets, which would limit their ability to import and would bring uh, you know, their uh, balance of trade uh, you know, back in balance. And so what all this has been is a sort of a long-winded way of saying that um, uh, the inflation that people are starting to uh, predict on Wall Street um, you know, certain folks on Wall Street, it's not, it's not unanimous, uh, but there seems to be a growing consensus that there will be inflation as a result of the policies of the federal government and of the Fed um, in the, uh, I guess, medium term. And I wanted to provide some context um, as to, you know, to, to give you a feel of what exactly that means, because uh, inflation, is, you know, is really sort of the end game. Uh, for the U.S. economy as it's currently constituted, inflation um, of, of any real significance um, in terms of CPI, which of course is heavily understated, but you know, using the CPI as the metric, if you got, if you saw inflation of three, four, five percent, um, I mean, that's that's you know, nearing the end game for the United States. Once inflation starts to take off, uh, printing money to import uh, goods from the rest of the world no longer is uh, a viable alternative to producing things on our own. And I don't mean to, to, to sound like I'm some kind of uh, uh, autark in any sense. I don't think that autarky uh, you know, is a good goal. I don't mean that the U.S. should just produce everything on its own and not import things. But you know, the, the whole foundation of international trade is that you have something to trade. The American people have been addicted to uh, consuming without producing for far too long, and it's going to hurt when the rug is finally pulled out from under us and the rest of the world uh, stops uh, financing uh, our drinking binge. You can't just shut down your, your economy in large part, large sections of your economy. Uh, you can't just stop producing things. You can't just stop working and uh, expect your standard of living to remain the same. Uh, government payments financed uh, by the printing of money by the central bank uh, cannot replace your income uh, that you uh, were earning uh, through honest production. All it does is um, substitute your lost wages uh, for um, green pieces of paper, or rather uh, numbers, uh, or ones and zeros in your digital banking account, uh, but your purchasing power will be the same uh, in the aggregate. The government may be able to destroy your business, um, shut down your employer, uh, ruin your job, uh, may, you know, and make you stay home, or at least uh, make it so that you know, you're stuck at home because you don't have a job, and replace your income in dollar terms, but they cannot replace your purchasing power. They cannot print resources out of thin air. This is why people should be worried about inflation um, in the next few months or, or you know, over the next couple of years. Not because the economy is reopening and, oh, gee, people might start consuming more because there's all this pent-up demand and, and there's going to be all this growth and the economy's going to run hot, so uh, where's going to be inflation? 
No, inflation is not healthy growth in the economy. Printing money is like cheating. Um, it, it, it's a way of trying to fool the rest of the world into thinking that, uh, you know, you produced more than you actually did, that you earned more of the uh, gross uh, international product of the planet Earth uh, than you actually did. And you may be able to fool some of the people some of the time with that kind of a lie, but you won't be able to fool all of the people of the world all of the time. Because of reasons such as, uh, you know, the shipping bottleneck um, among a myriad of other reasons, if the U.S. just continues to try and import more and more goods to replace uh, the lost domestic production, um, then prices, uh, the prices of those imports will have to rise at some point. And uh, if you look at commodity prices, um, it would seem as though um, they are prepared uh, for uh, the inflation that is, you know, yet to come in any official sense. So we'll see what Powell says tomorrow, but um, I think that about sums up my thoughts uh, going in uh, to the FOMC press conference. I will try to watch and listen to all the questions, although uh, I'm sure there won't be many good questions or actually any good questions asked of Powell, but I'll do my best to sit through it so that you don't have to. So I guess stay tuned tomorrow uh, for a, uh, a an analysis of, of what uh, Powell does or does not say.